2015 marks 20 years for the Road Transport Hall of Fame in Alice Springs and today nearly 300 people are going up on the Wall of Fame. There are hundreds of trucks here, there are thousands of people here and we're going to go and take a look around and hopefully speak to some characters along the way. You got any anecdotes from the old days, mate? I mean, they were pretty, pretty uh, wild times back then. Oh, they were the best times of the Highway 31 because, yeah, there was no CB radios in the early days. It was all sign language, so you knew what, exactly what you were doing. But the grey ghost, oh, that was a beautiful thing to drive over, but he, you made a quick mile. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the Lord. Do, do you mean in c compared to all the other gear that was on the road at the time, or just in yeah, general? Yeah, there was another gear. I pack at the MANs. We had the Kenworths at, at Comet and Quickers here, or to, to all the old TNT group. And, yep. Uh, what do you reckon about the just the way trucks have changed? Like the job has changed immeasurably since oh, you yeah, first came yeah, immensely. Right? Now you've, you've got B double buddy to go you know, Melbourne, Sydney, and times we used to do from all to Sydney on the old highway, but. Not like yesterday, it was bloody good. You could do what you liked, but as long as it was inside the law. Yeah, well, they didn't catch of course. One or the other. Well, congratulations on the induction, mate. Yeah, fantastic. I'm still kind of a bit blown away. Yeah, that's yeah, right. It's been, so, a, been a double one for me. Yeah. Uh, my father, too, he passed away about 18 years ago, so uh, it's a bit of an honour to uh, us up on the wall, both of us, anyway. And um, so, how many years trucking in the family? Uh, 53 this year, so it's a long time. That's a hell of a long time. Yeah, so. second generation, so. Uh, Steering it and yeah, yep. okay. Not easy work. I wish my dad left me a lolly shop sometimes. It would have been a lot easier, but <laughs> unfortunately, he left me a transport business, and that's all I know. It's in the blood. Now uh, you're renowned for having some uh, quite uh, pretty trucks, and I notice over in the Kenworth Pavilion, there's one there, but it's actually got a, quite a special theme about it. Would you like to tell me? Yeah, about certainly. It? Uh, I lost my son in 2011, March 17th, from uh, suicide. He finished to jump in front of a train. Um, changed my life from that day onwards. So. I could have gone one way or the other way, but decided with a lot of respect from family and friends that put me the uh, right direction and, uh, and it's probably the best medication for me. We did the truck up for um, the honour of my son, then uh, a lot of people in the industry have seen it and I'm very surprised a lot of people haven't seen it because it's been out there for four years now, uh, promoting you know, Beyond Blue and, and, and promoting the memory of my son and not one person could say anything bad about it. Um, very proud of my son, so uh, the truck's at Kenworth, Australian built truck and my son was an Australian built boy type of thing so we decided to uh, promote it and, and I didn't realise how much it's needed out there with, uh, with depression, anxiety and, and even attempt to suicide type of thing. I have people tell me every day that that truck fixes them just looking at it or sitting next to that truck. So with the future is this the direction you're going to keep uh, moving in as far as Beyond Blue goes? Have you got any any more plans? In that oh, I would love to. I'd love to have more time but I run a family business and yep. if anyone in trucking could relate to where I'm coming from, you don't have much spare time. So, but I kind of squeeze it. The uh, I don't like wasting one second of my life. I'm a goer and we'll make it happen, man. And this is pretty important out there. And didn't realise how much it's important because people tell me how important it is. It's a taboo word, uh, suicide, depression. It, they think it's a weakness. Well, it's not. It's something you've got to you've got to share with people and uh, get help early in the piece before it's you know it's too late. But no, I definitely will keep going. That truck's going to be in the family for a long time to come. The, the beauty of your industry is seen through the middle of our town every day of the year. How many kilometres were you saying? 2.3 million. It's still got the original brake linings on it, original wheel bearings, original uni joints. The truck's ready to go to work, but I just didn't have any more work to do with it, so I pulled the pin. And you even know how much you spent on fuel? Yes, yes. $1,103,833.63. Over how long? 15 years. The, I, I, kept a, I kept a log of the fuel and the repairs that I did on my truck when I adjusted the brakes, when I put new tyres on it, when I had oil leaks fixed on it. If I took it into the workshop, I got the mechanic's name. 
to put beside the repair in case something went wrong further down the track. Um, and it's just the perfect truck to go back to work, but there's just no work to do with it, man. No temptation to go back to work, no, in it? No, no, there's just too much bureaucracy out there now. Righty, yeah, so you prefer um, doing the mud carton thing? Yeah, just working local in little circles. Yeah, <laughs> plus there's a benefit in that too, because I don't have to pay for the fuel that I'm putting in the truck. Nearly 300 people have been added to the wall today, and we've heard bad stories, tragic stories, but also some really great stories as well. Now, it's a great event, it celebrates the lives and uh, of the people that actually make up the Australian transport industry. I'll definitely be here next year.